All right. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Search Bar, the first of a Split Mango vlogcast where we discuss web and web development in an approachable, real way with genuine conversations about uh, web development, uh, speaking on anything from short, quick explanations of key terms, uh, defining specific uh, technologies, lingo, or challenges in web design and development. We're looking to expand the conversation and to continue building a better web experience. Uh, so let's get started. Um, let's just make one thing clear here. Uh, this guy is the expert. Eric is one of our front-end developers from the team here today, and I'm, well, I'm the guy that uses Google to find out what things are before we started recording. Uh, I'm going to be the buffer that uh, is going to make sure that everyone um, who's not Eric can understand what we're talking about, um, just a bit of translation. So let's get going. Do um, you have anything else to say before we go in? Uh, no, I'm just excited to... Uh help everyone out there get a handle on uh, some information that's going to be really, really helpful for them when uh, they start to look at creating new websites and uh, or looking for experts uh, to help them with that task. Cool. All right. So to get things started, um, I'm literally going to do what I said I'm the person that does here, which is uh, I punched into Google uh, our first topic, which is uh, CMS. Uh, so we're going to talk about CMS, what they are. And, uh, and what they mean for website development. So I punched CMS into Google, and obviously Wikipedia came back, and what it had to say about a CMS uh, is this. Uh, a content management system, CMS, manages the creation and modification of digital content. It typically supports multiple users in a collaborative environment. CMS features vary widely, most CMS include web-based publishing, format management, history editing, and version control, indexing, search, and retrieval. By their nature, content management systems support the separation of content and presentation. A web content management system, WCM or WCMS, is a CMS designed to support the management of content on web pages. Uh, most popular CMSs are also WCMSs. Web content includes text, embedded graphics, photos, video, audio, maps, and program code, such as for applications that displays content or interacts with the user. Such a content management system is typically uh, has two major components, a content management application, which is the front-end user interface that allows a user, even with limited experience, to add, modify, and remove content from a website without the intervention of a webmaster. A content delivery application, CDA, compiles that information and updates the website. So, what does that mean? Uh, so, the way I understood it when I read it uh, is that uh, a CMS is a system that lets you input your content through some interface, kind of like a word processor, like if you're using Word or Google Docs, uh, but outputs that to a designed user-facing facade. So you have what your website looks like and you have your input device over here, like Word. Um, and then you can choose from a variety of user-facing templates to make it look how you want, or you can have a custom designed and developed theme for you, uh, which is what part of what we do at Split Mango. Um, uh, that was a really good explanation, just right out of the gate of what a uh, content management system is. I think you broke down that uh, very technical, uh, boring and confusing explanation that you found on Wikipedia yeah. Wiki really, really well. Wikipedia definitely was confusing when I read yeah, the first time. Yeah, I feel even as a, even as a developer, uh, what you read to me, uh, first uh, I followed along, but yeah, then I got bored and I think it would be really, really frustrating for uh, someone that's a content manager or a business trying to decode that uh, would just be very, very challenging. So, so great work on what you were able to already unpack. Would you, would you have any other analogies or any other way of explaining it? Um, just to see if we can offer like another quick explanation or, or does that word kind of input and then output into like a storefront window kind of makes sense. Uh, so it does make sense, but I think analogies are definitely very, very helpful. We use them all the time with our clients uh, uh, here at Split Mango. One analogy for a content management system uh, that I really like is the analogy uh, of a car uh, and what a driver experiences when they drive a car. 
So when you get into a driver's seat, most driver's seats, uh, regardless of which maker model that you're in, you pretty much know how to drive that car. You know the gas pedal is going to make you go forward, the brake pedal uh, is going to make you slow down, uh, and the uh, steering wheel is going to turn you around. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in the engine that's making that all happen. Uh, that you don't know how the engine works, well, probably not, but uh, you likely don't know how the engine works and you don't really need to to drive that car. The content management system is very uh, similar. Uh, you end up at an interface, uh, much like a car where you, uh, or a text editor in this case, uh, where you can punch in some content and then when you visit your website the next time, it's done exactly what you wanted it to and expected it to without having to jump into the engine and actually um, tinker with everything to make that happen. You didn't have to build the engine each time to make that car move forward. Sweet. Cool. Um, so to, to further unpack that, like those, you know, the variety of analogies. Um, I think that uh, something that Wikipedia said um, as well is that uh, content management systems support the separation of content and presentation. Um, and from what I understand, uh, that that becomes something important, but why is that something that I should feel is important on a website? So really what, you, what uh, a lot of our clients values and a lot of content creators values is, is the content that they actually create for their website, whether that be valuable information about their business, uh, something that, uh, that they're an expert in. Uh, and what they, uh, when they build that, that content is uh, very, very uh, valuable and the front, having it tied directly to the front end means whenever you wanted to update the front end, maybe uh, design changes have happened or your brand has changed, you would have to build a complete new website and you wouldn't have that content separated, so you'd be starting from scratch. An example that, uh, that I like is, let's take, there's a, uh, let's take the idea of there's a website that is particularly useful for people with disabilities and maybe it's been going on um, uh, since the 90s and it's got all of this really, really great content that although now its design is outdated, um, people that visit that website uh, are really, really helped by that content and they're wanting to make the website more user-friendly in 2019, uh, if they were to build hundreds and hundreds of pages uh, that was valuable information, like information for people with disabilities, and they were to try and put it on a new system, their content wasn't separated. So they'd be really kind of hooped. Uh, if they had used a content management system, their content would be in a database, which we'll explore, uh, which we'll explore later on, uh, which then could be used uh, and referenced in this new in this new website with a new CMS uh, that could then keep all that valuable content and the stuff that they created and they could take that with them rather than having to leave le years of valuable work and important information behind. Um, I think it's really interesting that you said, uh, or like where you took that at first was that um, if you have this great content and you need to update the design of your website, it's possible to do because the content and design are separated where in like my knee-jerk reaction to why I, I could see wanting that is if it's something as simple as like a, I have a brick and mortar storefront that's also selling online um, or even if it's not selling online that's just like the, the, the landing page for businesses now anyways and if I wanted to do something like simple like update my store hours or like put a holiday notice or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to do because the design doesn't touch the content, of, which is your business hours. So, right. it's, it's, so it makes those kind of changes really easy to do. Right, and you wouldn't need uh, a web developer's help to make that change. And that type of change is super uh, time sensitive as well. Uh, for example, maybe um, during your last holiday, you had some uh, angry complaints on Facebook that said, why weren't you open? We thought you would have been open. And then you can prepare for that uh, next time by quickly going on without uh, contacting a web developer. Uh, and on your hours under in your contact page, our Holiday hours are blank or we're closed on holidays uh, rather than uh, waiting to hear back from a web expert uh, you can do that yourself and it really puts in uh, the power and in empowers uh, content creators to be I, in charge I kind of just see it as like the internet's version of like gone fishing <laughs> you know where like yeah. you, you can literally like decide like one afternoon like um, I or if you had like a family emergency something you mm -hmm. had to leave your shop or, or whatever it's really easy to make those changes totally um, with a content management system, you can do that very yeah. quickly without, 
again, contact a designer. And yeah. Like that. And if you were to try to do it yourself, you would be at risk uh, without a content management system uh, of potentially breaking your whole site. Uh, coding can be very fickle. And uh, if you delete the wrong line, everything it is can seemingly disappear on the front end. It's still yeah. on the back end, but it can seem to disappear. Yeah. And well, and more importantly, uh, like the users accessing your website won't know that. They'll no. just know that it's not there. Maybe you're closed now or something like that. Like exactly. Probably, you know, Could affect your Google rankings as well. Good to know. Um, okay. Uh, you mentioned database. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I need to know about a database in a CMS? It sounds, honestly, like I hear database and and... I hear data and I think of data from Star Trek. It yeah. seems like this like technology that yeah. like is made up and mysterious and that I don't need to understand. Um, but like, what do I need to understand as an average you know user or uh, maintainer of a website? Like, what do I need to know about databases? Like, what is it? So uh, databases are really um, uh, interesting as a content creator because you only need to really know. Uh, the advantage of them and what they're doing. I like to think them think of them as kind of like the magic in between. Uh, on the back end, you have some content that appears, and then on the front end, you have some content that appears. Uh, and where that content is actually lives is in the database. So you've got this front end or back end of a website uh, where the user logs in the content manager and starts editing content. They hit save, and then in the database, that content also changes. And then when someone visits visits on the front end of the website, uh, instead of referencing a file. File, uh, like a word file or anything like that, it's going to reference the, what the, a specific part of the database that's going to pull that content out that that other user um, just saved. And that's going to happen every time that website is accessed. Uh, they're also very important because it really re it's really like the bread and butter of the separation of uh, the, con the, like the, the content and the design. Uh, since all of your content uh, that is going to live in the database, that's what makes it modular for future projects. Uh, and also uh, be able to be backed up uh, and maybe stored somewhere, somewhere off-site. Uh, when your files are just one set of files that live on a server, um, if you for some reason lose access to that server, uh, someone go, if you have some, maybe uh, someone tries to break into that server some way or another um, and they delete the files, that, that content's gone. But a lot of really great web hosts are gonna offer um, backup of both files um, and databases, but specifically databases. And if you can keep that safe, uh, you're gonna be way, uh, way ahead in the long game when you've got what you've created, your, your real uh, bread and butter, which is the content that you've made. So, uh, on that note, just to kind of explain, uh, so for me, when, like, when you were saying, like, um, let's say you had, like, the Word file that you yeah. were hosting on an older website where it's people, like, literally yeah. would look at, like, the text. Yeah. And, and um, the difference between the database and the Word file being that, like, it's not just this one kind of, uh, you know, holy object file kind yeah. of thing where the database, if I delete something on the database or change something, there's a chance to get it back. Is that because mm. there's a version or is it like... Well, a good web host will keep it. So, but they're both technically files. Uh, so the word file is usually an HTML or a PHP file in web development. Uh, the uh, database is also its own file, but we know as web developers and web hosts, uh, that that particular file, that particular file, that particular database is of high value to to you, and that likely it's changing all the time. So uh, a good web host will make sure that there's backups on backups on backups of uh, that uh, that uh, that very valuable data that you have. Uh, it's so ingrained in web design or web development uh, that uh, any uh, good uh, uh, web host is going to take care of you on that end. Okay, sweet. Um, so, related to database, uh, you know, uh, when I, like, content management systems can kind of inherently sound complicated because it's a system, like, mm -hmm. it's a whole thing together. If I need a website, really, that's just a, let's say I need a website that only really needs five pages in total or a few pages, um, why, like, why would I not want to make just those few pages even if I have to change the code every time or something like that, instead of using a CMS, like, uh, like, is there a downside if I choose not to use the CMS? Or like, that website that you're talking about, about five pages, um, 
if you were to build it with, uh, say, just plain HTML files. Uh, it could potentially be uh, the right way to go, but that website is going to have to be basic for pretty much ever, uh, where you may just have only content that people read and no engagement. And websites don't really function that way anymore. They're meant to be interacted with uh, and engaged with rather than just clicking a link to an email. There's calls to actions for forms, um, interactive feeds, and although you may uh, right now only want maybe a one or two page uh, landing page about an event you have coming up, likely your users are going to request more from you. Um, they're going to want to contact you. It's going to be much easier to do if there's a contact form, they just send off their message rather than having to open up their email client. They may want a calendar. Uh, there, there may be an argument for a very small website, but we like to think in the future. Where is your business going to go? Where is uh, where's your idea headed to? And although a custom coded HTML page uh, may be good for right now, uh, how long is that going to last you for? And are you prepared, if you've made 5, 10, 15 pages, are you prepared to lose that content or have to do much more work to re retain it? Because uh, like we said, when you separate those two, it's much easier to take that data with you. What, uh, what are some common CMS systems? What might make one better than the other? Uh, so there's going to be, uh, of the big players, uh, there's going to be four that uh, you'll see the names flying around a lot of. That's going to be WordPress, um, uh, Drupal, you'll see Shopify for e-commerce, uh, and then uh, Joomla as well. There's going to be a, a whole bunch more that uh, your web developer may recommend to you. Uh, is You really want to make sure that it works for you. Uh, there's going to be really two categories of CMSs. There's going to be ones that are going to be uh, uh, fully customizable, self-hosted uh, platforms like WordPress, Google, and Joomla, and then uh, and then you're also going to have uh, content management systems that are more subscription-based. Uh, and you're seeing a lot of those pop up now with things like Squarespace and Wix. And uh, what would make one better uh, or worse is really what is your what is your goal? Like, what are you trying to do with your website? As your business grows and and your uh, user base grows, that user base is going to have a specific goal uh, around your product or service that you want them to complete and that they're trying to complete on their website. And these service-based and template-based solutions that come just straight out of the box. Uh, are going to be uh, not based around that journey that they want to take. And then you would, uh, then I would recommend uh, the opportunities like WordPress, um, Drupal, um, or Shopify uh, that you can build a fully custom experience built around the goals of your users. What I understand is, is that like uh, some of those subscription-based services uh, cater to as many people as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So that they don't have the opportunity, like you were saying, to tailor the the user or the customer or whatever whatever yeah. your user is their journey uh, specifically. So like you basically, so what I'm understanding is that is, is that you potentially lack the ability to build in functionality. Right. There's going to be you are going to be limited on a on a certain level. You can add and drop blocks here and there, but as far as a specific tested um, journey, you're not going to be able to integrate that. To me, the way I understand it, because WordPress, uh, you know, being inherently the one thing we haven't actually mentioned is that uh, is that some of these some of these larger uh, big ticket CMSs like WordPress and Drupal are actually um, like WordPress is open source mm -hmm. and it creates a database that uh, you have access to. Yeah, right? and you yeah. can keep that information. Is there the risk uh, for subscription services? Like if you stop paying for your service, is it going to disappear on you? Uh, they will likely give you some level of, a, of an export office, uh, option, but uh, when you're picking your service and you're looking at those subscriptions, uh, I would uh, ask these types of questions. If that's a service that you're going for uh, and you've got this larger journey plan for your business, uh, ask them that exact question. Send an email into their support. I want to start with Squarespace, but then I want to go to a custom uh, solution like WordPress or or um, Shopify that's built around my brand. What's going to happen in my data? Because that is the valuable content you're creating. So like even like uh, smaller people, uh, like influences and influencers or beginning musicians, like you said, mm -hmm. getting going if they're writing blog content or updates from the road and things yeah. like that. Uh, Future-proofing yourself 
Oh. Like a solid CMS is a good idea. Yeah, as soon as you're starting to create content and you're starting to get a wealth beyond uh, four or five pages that just gives some general information and you're creating content on a regular basis, uh, you're going to uh, really want full control over that, con over that content. Yeah, it's like keeping it in your own like personal library. Uh, on that note, WordPress, uh, the like the open source software that we mentioned a few times, and that is probably actually one of the bigger giants. From hugely from doing my googling beforehand, I I've read uh, numbers that up to thirty percent of mm -hmm. the internet is actually on a WordPress based site. Um, but WordPress is primarily made as a blogging software, yeah. um, which I think everybody knows what blogs are, but just yeah. internet logs or articles mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, if I want to build a professional website featuring extremely high-end widgets or items for sale, and all I really need is that this, let's say this, the widget is this mug. It's a very high-end diamond-encrusted mug, and all I really need is uh, beautiful images of it, uh, you know, the bullet points with the basic information to generate a lead or whatever, um, and, and maybe down the road I'll want to go into some more in-depth information. Um, is there, is there a reason why we need to use something made for constant publishing? Is it, is it, have we already kind of talked about that? or I think that the uh, branding around WordPress uh, really goes in two directions, but to the, uh, to the consumer, uh, oftentimes they end up with that impression that WordPress is for blogging because uh, they do have one arm of uh, their platform that is specifically targeted around blogging. Uh, and it's a great platform for that, but WordPress um, being open source and giving us such great access to uh, being able to build on top of it really lets us build like whatever we want, uh, all open source. We can get as nitty gritty uh, as we want. The way that I like to uh, uh, talk about is maybe another car analogy, uh, where uh, although when you step uh, step into a car is it, uh, and then you can know how to use it on the back end, so many different cars are made for so many different things. Um, some are made for uh, hauling, some are made for going fast, some are um, uh, made for self-driving now. There's so many different uh, uses for, for cars, and what WordPress really does is it doesn't define the use of the vehicle that we're creating out of the box. It says, here's a system for managing content and putting it where you need to uh, and getting it out there. And then we can talk to our clients and find out what are they doing with their content, what type of content do they have, uh, and then build the car for them. And WordPress gives us uh, a really good starting place, but doesn't define too much. Uh, so it's a perfect balance, uh, in my mind, uh, between giving us a, a really good starting platform, but not telling us uh, what it, we can and can't do with that, uh, with that platform. Um, so another question uh, that comes up in the internet all the time is, uh, is it secure? Is a CMS secure? Um, you know, if, uh, and, and this question is actually like, is, is, has to do, I guess, actually with uh, security and, and longevity of the yeah. website, is that if, um, if I'm building just a static coded page uh, and that is not changing with the internet, how does CMS change with the internet? Like, it, like, like is it going to keep up? with the internet is secure for the future that so, way. So I do think it's really important uh, to acknowledge that um, anything on the internet, uh, on a file, on a server somewhere, um, is never going to be 100% secure, whether that's your files or a CMS. Um, anyone that tells you that it's, everything is 100% secure all of the time, um, I would ask a little bit a little bit more questions, but because uh, people are going to try to get into those, into those files um, at some point. Uh, but with WordPress, it is going to um, grow with the internet because it has such a strong team of, uh, of developers um, contributing to that larger project uh, that are going to uh, uh, keep up with the times. But uh, since so many uh, thousands of developers that are either working on plugins or on the core itself um, are very, very talented, oftentimes if there is an issue or a vulnerability, by the time um, it's even out there for, for very long, there's already a fix for it because so many people are working on that pro working on that project. Um, so that being said, uh, safety and security around any, around any site is something that's really, really important uh, to us uh, here. We work hard to build uh, relationships with our clients uh, that are long-term. That's not just, here's your site, um, 
good luck, have fun, um, see you in eight years. We really uh, specialize in maintenance and support as well uh, to make sure that the beautiful site that we build for our clients uh, is um, safe, uh, uh, on the ser uh, safe on our servers uh, as well as um, updated uh, and secure as new vulnerabilities come out. Uh, if you just end up launching a site and leaving it at its current version, um, there may be a vulnerability that's discovered um, and maybe a year, a month. Um, but if you don't update and keep that um, CMS secure, uh, you could be uh, have potential vulnerabilities. So, uh, so just, our, our, yeah, to, 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 to loop around on the original question, are CMSs secure? Um, uh, yes, they are. Uh, uh, but it's always important to continue to take care of them. So just to be clear too, um, when you say keeping your CMS updated and mm -hmm. keeping your website updated, um, you do mean updating the CMS software versus rather than um, like a, a client updating their website. So you're not changing the hours of the store um, as much as you're changing the, the CMS version. Mm -hmm. what you were saying. Yeah, exactly. So uh, WordPress um, upgrades quite often uh, and there'll be small fixes or big, fi uh, or, or big new uh, um, features that get released yeah. uh, and they will push that out to your, out to your site uh, but they require you to often engage with it uh, to make that update uh, happen to your site. Yeah. Um, so that's when I say keep your site updated. Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to take care of your CMS and keep it secure, that is the number one thing that I, I can recommend uh, for you to do is to make sure that, 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 that whatever site that you, or whatever platform you're using uh, is um, up to date. So uh, on that note of uh, keeping a CMS or keeping a software updated, mm -hmm. I have friends who updated at one point or another the software on a certain brand of phone and then mm -hmm. that phone became a brick because it can't handle it. <laughs> The, yeah. the new software, um, is there a danger of that happening with your website yeah. if you update your CMS without like, let's, I mean, if WordPress has been around for a long time, if I went from version two to version five, am I going to run into some problems? Yes, you likely are. Yeah. Um, and I definitely, definitely want to, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, so when I talk about our maintenance and support, that's something that we do uh, for a lot of a lot of our clients is we test that internally and make sure that a site, uh, when it does get updated, uh, that those updates are going to go smoothly. Uh, and then we take care of that in the background so the, uh, the business owners uh, and, and content creators that we work with can focus on what they're really, really good at, which is uh, their business and the content that they create. Well, we take care uh, of the security uh, um, around their CMS and around their content. So, um, so on that security note, like, uh, CMSs inherently do have, like, they are updated regularly mm -hmm. because that is, I mean, that's their business, even though, uh, WordPress is open source and you can use it without actually, um, like the initial software mm -hmm. is a free software, yeah. but they are constantly working because that's, mm -hmm. that's their software and their product to keep it up to date and safe, mm -hmm. but you also have to do some work on keeping it safe and secure. Totally. Like whether it's the developer or the website owner, if they're mm -hmm. comfortable with it, but, um, but essentially the CMS can change with the website, without your website really changing? Yeah, most of the time. Um, there would be major updates uh, for, some, for some of these things that would uh, require some updates uh, for your site, but uh, for the most part, uh, you keep that uh, updates happening in the background, in the front, front end of the user experience uh, of the site is uh, the same as it was before you hit update, uh, especially if you're doing things right. Yeah, okay, sweet. If I want my website to be for e-commerce, uh, do I need a content management system? Um, you know, I guess I don't need a blog, I need a web shop. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what's, what's the options? What, 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 what do you do here? So, uh, yes, uh, I would highly, highly recommend uh, a e-commerce CMS uh, that's built around um, built around selling online because that is the primary goal of your site. So I'm going to interrupt one second. So, so what you're saying is that um, a CMS can also be uh, an e-commerce option. So totally, like, 100%. They're not, they're not necessarily separated. Yeah, yeah, because uh, your products then, in this, in this case, are your content. Uh, and then you're uh, managing uh, that content um, with a piece, uh, an application or a piece of software. So it's still definitely a content management system. Uh, just the content uh, feels a little different. Instead of blog posts uh, and pages, uh, we have products and collections. 
And if it, your business is your products, you're definitely going to want a content management system built around that uh, because there's going to be so much built into that system uh, that's really going to make your life much easier um, and configuring things like taxes and credit card payments uh, right out of the box uh, with Shopify is going to be uh, much uh, less time intensive or uh, than, was, than doing that uh, in a custom way. And very secure because that um, platform is built with those concerns in the mind, uh, in, in its mind, like in its, in its DNA from the ground up. It's, yeah. it's built to uh, build to sell products and, and do all of that very, very well. Uh, so uh, I would recommend um, Shopify. It's also a Canadian company, so I'm a little biased. So Shopify is, uh, it's just like a different purpose to CMS essentially. Mm -hmm. So like, if I was gonna like broad stroke it, um, and now I also I do also understand that WordPress can be used as uh, like you can sell through WordPress. Yeah. But um, WordPress again, let's broad stroke it into yeah. what what Google tells you straight up. Yeah. That WordPress is a blogging software, and uh, and Shopify is an e-commerce software. But yeah. like those are kind of both half truths, if I'm understanding it right. For where sure. WordPress is a content management system designed for, like, originally designed for making blogs and yeah. pages and things like that. But there is e-commerce integration yeah. where Shopify was made for e-commerce. Mm -hmm. But, like, in that sense, from what I understand, yeah. it is e-commerce that that software is about managing your e-commerce and your content is your products. Right, yeah. Uh, I see WordPress as kind of um, content first uh, that can also do e-commerce. Uh, and Shopify I see as like e-commerce first that can also do content. Okay. Um, they both have very specific goal, uh, things that they're really, really good at. Yeah. Uh, and then matching what you need from your business uh, to the right uh, content management system would be when I would recommend uh, e each one for your particular before your business. So basically, they're both like malleable enough that mm -hmm. you almost couldn't pick a wrong one, yeah. but you can pick a right one. Totally. This one's kind of funny yeah. because it uh, could potentially put us out of business. Yeah. But uh, if WordPress is open sourced and designed to be user friendly, why do I need a developer? I've heard it's got this big, large support network and uh, a large knowledge base. I can maybe figure it out, can I? Ah. Uh, uh, Maybe you can. Uh, if you want to take some courses online um, and get uh, and uh, kind of get some education around coding, um, anyone uh, with enough time investment and learning can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but out of the box, could you plug and play WordPress and then all of a sudden be a WordPress developer? Unfortunately, not. Um, unfortunately for me, yeah. um, as well, uh, is that I think there's been a little bit of uh, a larger misconception about what op open source is. Uh, it's really become synonymous with that free thing that's really cool. Um, and although um, or, or WordPress is um, uh, the platform itself, um, you're not going to pay any, any cost for, open source really means that as developers we have access to everything inside of it. As a web developer, I spend a lot of time crunching code, but as a web design agency, uh, that's not all that we do and all that we offer. Um, each uh, user that visits your site is trying to complete some kind of goal, whether it's like contact you, um, buy a new product, um, or um, communicate and blog or comment on a blog. They have something that they want to do. And uh, so what we do is we make sure uh, that your goals and your users' goals, because those are oftentimes different and both very, very important, um, are built into the DNA of your, of your design. So although let's say that, yeah, you've got one of these themes for WordPress that you can drag and drop and make look really cool and flashy, and you might be able to create a website that looks really, really great, and you might get it right. That would be awesome if you did. Um, but what we do is we, uh, with our, expert, our years of expertise, build to complete um, goals and journeys. Uh, and are trained to do that. So even if you could technically um, jump in and start editing code and you were able to do that and you're all of a sudden you're in the matrix and you're just knocking everything out, um, if you're not making the right design decisions, it might not even be the really right solution, even if you could. And even then, uh, like from what you said, even if I'm making decisions, like design decisions and making a website that looks great, this is a key that, like a key takeaway I think for me is 
perhaps, yes, if I put in, and, and this is another thing too, is if I put in the time and the effort on my part and invested that in finding out how to make a WordPress site look the way I think it should look, yeah. um, that it, that doesn't necessarily mean that the way I think it should look is going to mm -hmm. aid my user's journey. Yeah, and it, for me it really comes back to like, what are you really, really good at? Uh, are you uh, a great content creator, an influencer of some sort, a larger corporation and brand? Um, what, as you, uh, what is your company or your brand really good at? And it's likely not web development, it's something and, else. And even then, uh, like what I was just saying and, and what you've also said is, is that the key there is kind of in time. Mm -hmm. Is that, yes, with the right amount of time, I could yeah. make yeah. this this ex website. I could probably do enough research and find out how to make the web journey or like the, the user journey make it look the way I want it to, mm -hmm. and and I can do all this. But then I think maybe the difference is is literally just in that time. Yeah. And whether or not I'm am spending a year and a half of my own time to get, web to get a, to yeah. get a website yeah. made, to, uh, yeah. and then. And then by that time, I've made the website, and, and for all I know, the, the design choices I made when I went in on this journey, yeah. journey yeah. are like, maybe it was a trend that a year and a half ago that I needed need to do yeah. an update to the theme, you know? Yeah, like it may not be built right for Google. There's so many different things that are that kind of go into that, and it always comes back to like, what what is the best use of your time, kind of what you're talking about? And maybe if you're, let's go back to influencers, because there's a lot of, uh, of influencers, and it's uh, really coming up right now, and it's become a huge industry. Um, what is the best use of their time? Is the best use of their time to become a web developer? Or is it to communicate online with their communities um, and create their brand? And yeah. I, would, I would say that uh, it's not to become a web developer. I feel like that's probably most businesses, to be yeah. honest. Like, and that's, and that's the key, that just like focusing on what you're good at, whether you're an influencer who's building your own personal brand and, mm -hmm. and being a small person in a big landscape as yeah. much as you possibly can, or whether or not you're selling these big, shiny widgets. Yeah. Like, and, and your, your specialty is making the widgets, yeah. you know, or if you're making like, a, like <laughs> it's really art, artisanal yeah. axes or something. Yeah, it's you know? really funny that you use the words widget specifically. Uh, and that's just a, a little bit of WordPress humor because our widget means something very specific. And on the next question is, uh, what is a plugin? <laughs> uh, so plugins can enable widgets, but they are they are slightly different things. So uh, the best way to think about a plugin is a plugin is uh, a little piece of code or functionality that you can add to your website really easily, um, specifically with WordPress, as we're going to see most of this, uh, that's going to extend the base functionality. Uh, so a really a simple example is maybe you have a site that has a sidebar um, that does enable widgets, but you need to tell the weather. Maybe you uh, have an adventure tourism company and you want to put a weather on the side and you don't want to uh, figure out how to sit down and code and uh, do a query to um, so, some um, API that's going to give you the weather. Uh, yeah, a lot of jargon. You already said yeah. like three things that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. So, but there's uh, other developers um, that have built small applications that you can just add to your website uh, that may just make that pop up like magic uh, on your sidebar. So, uh, so a plugin essentially is something that can add uh, pre-existing functionality to yeah. your website. And, and yeah, sometimes it's visual like widgets, but then sometimes it just extends. Uh, the base, um, whether it's security or SEO or whatever um, else it may be, uh, of, of uh, WordPress's default install, it kind of extends that. If uh, so, if that extended functionality, uh, whether it's like a weather device, like you'd said, yeah. or if it's something that tell like uh, you know, actually, I'm not sure if a plugin or a widget would be something that shows your last social post or something yeah. like that, but. Um, what if, what if instead of something that like we see on lots of sites, like a social post or, or the weather, yeah. what if there's something that like that is very specific that doesn't exist yet? Mm -hmm. Like what, what do you do about that? Is that the kind of thing where, I don't know. Uh, so uh, the plugin idea is usually, it's a piece of code that a developer has um, developed uh, that you just kind of um, add on top of your website 
um, to uh, add a new piece of functionality. Uh, when you're looking for something as specific as that, um, maybe um, there you want a small app about uh, how to um, correctly size a bike for your kid and uh, you put in their height, um, their age, the type of riding they're going to do, uh, and you want to build this kind of functionality in your site. There's likely not going to be uh, a widget that's going to, or a plugin, sorry. There's not a, a child sizing bike plugin on it? <laughs> no, there may be. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on, on that one specifically, but uh, it's ch probably not going to be there. And even if it was, I would honestly recommend that we, uh, instead of going the route of a plugin, uh, build that directly. Uh, into your site, uh, so it's not an external piece of code uh, that's just kind of sitting and has been plugged in. It's built in right to the core to uh, uh, end up in the exact way and uh, brand of your website. So uh, we specialize in that, whether they're small or large, uh, 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 we oftentimes will build apps um, or web apps uh, that give information or, or extend WordPress or send information back and forth. Uh, so. I think the core question is, what if I want something in my website um, that, uh, do, I do, do I just download it? Can you help me uh, find a plugin? If there isn't a plugin, can you build me a, a plugin? And I think the, uh, the answer is, if you want something on your site and it's built with the correct CMS, we can build anything into your site. Um, I guess on that note is, is that, that that's when a developer becomes kind of very much handy or, like, or needed necessary mm -hmm. in that to build specific functionality and in some cases actually implement uh, non-specific functionality. Yeah. Because like, so like, and, and especially from what you just said, like if I, if I had a plugin and I put it on a page and you were saying like a completely custom app mm -hmm. where it, it, it matches everything with your brand and, yeah. and the site, is there the risk that if I use a plugin that it's not going to match it correctly? Like, well, it's probably going to be pretty restricted, especially if it's some kind of um, widget or, or drag and drop type functionality. Is it's going to be like it can go here or it can go here, or maybe there's a third area that that it could be placed in for maybe yeah. a social feed. Uh, but we talked a little bit about the importance of user journeys. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you work with an agency, uh, they're likely when you request a new feature, whether it be a social feed. Um, a new uh, email sign up or whatever it is, uh, they're going to um, look at your existing website, look at your user goals, uh, and look at how the site's um, our, our, like foundational journey is built, and they're going to give you a recommendation for the best way to integrate that to uh, meet this new goal and feature that you have, but also maintain your old ones. If you were to use um, just a drag and drop plugin, um, you may uh, complete your own goals of having this new feature, but if it's so big and bold that the, uh, people are spending more time looking at that than maybe your contact button or your products, uh, although it's nice, it doesn't really uh, meet the needs of your user or you. Um, so we've gone over uh, what a CMS can do, mm -hmm. mostly. Um, so what would the limitations of a CMS be, or like are there limitations to it? Uh, how will I know if WordPress or another CMS is going to be the right solution for me and to grow with? Like, is it, it sounds like it can keep going, but um, are there potential ceilings with it? Uh, there's always um, there's always some ceilings with uh, ceilings with everything, but and all of these different. Uh, uh, all of these different CMSs are going to uh, offer different solutions for different things. Uh, and hopefully uh, your web developer is going to talk through some of the options with you about what's going to be the best solution for your business and your content managers. Um, some of them manage content very differently. Some I find that are much more intuitive, more intuitive than others. Uh, I think it's always a little bit of a mix of both. And I think a good, um, uh, good web developer agency is going to come to you with a, a recommendation, uh, but is always going to be open to questions about that recommendation. Uh, and I think it's, uh, as a client, uh, it's actually really um, encouraged if they come to me like, yeah, I see that you've recommended WordPress. Um, what, uh, what do you, why do you recommend WordPress opposed to some other options for my specific goals? Uh, so uh, I think the right solution for you um, is going to be a mix between them making a recommendation and then also you doing some of your own research as, uh, as well and maybe them giving you some little tidbits that you can kind of start um, diving into and some, uh, some examples of why it might be the right CMS for you. So, so basically, uh, I mean, that, that's how to determine it, but like um, as, as far as limitations go, so, so in a nutshell, you are saying that like, Knowing whether or not WordPress or another CMS yeah. is really about addressing yeah. 
what you need, which we've outlined is like a user journey and, and, uh, yeah. and, and what you expect out of a yeah. website. But potential limitations, like do you see any with something like WordPress? Sure. Or, yeah, like, yeah. or is there a situation, I guess, I guess maybe a better question, is there, is there a situation where you would say like WordPress is not a great option? Yeah, there totally, there totally is. Um, so uh, WordPress organizes content in a very particular way. Uh, and if your content is organized um, in uh, a way that doesn't really match up or uh, you really need a custom solution that's built around your very specific business for managing and creating content, uh, we may uh, recommend something that is built from the ground up, uh, not around publishing and, uh, pages and posts. Uh, at its core, but we may offer uh, some kind of custom solution that is the whole architecture, the whole engine of the car um, is built around uh, your your needs and we'll actually build uh, that engine for you. So, uh, you know what, there's some, like if you need to uh, pick up crates, um, no car is going to do that for you. Um, you're going to need a forklift uh, to start picking up crates and uh, uh, in this particular example, WordPress is going to be that car, and but if you need a forklift, we can build you that too, uh, but we would just then not make that particular recommendation of WordPress or a content management system. Uh, we would build you the forklift from the ground up. It's a, I like that analogy quite yeah. a bit, um, because a car doesn't pick up crates. Yeah. It can, um, you could, well, I mean, you could have a car that sells crates. Mm -hmm. Or you could force a car too, right? Like you could ram the front of that car as hard as you can into some crates and there may be a crate on the roof by the time you stop. Um, but, but then you not, have a messed up car. Yeah, a messed up car and that crate's probably broken, so it's not the solution. It's not, yes, yeah. you technically did the thing, but it's not. It doesn't mean it's the right solution. Totally. So I guess it's, 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 and on that note, it's saying mm -hmm. that like there is, if you have, I guess if you have the right developer, there aren't necessarily limits to yeah. something like WordPress, but yeah. It doesn't make it the best idea? Yeah, and sometimes we'll separate those two things, right? Like maybe um, that car uh, solves 90% of the problems that you need, but just from time to time, um, you need to um, pick up these boxes with a forklift, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so just because it's not inside of WordPress doesn't mean it's not uh, inside of your website. It can still totally be part of your website, but just managed in a different area. Uh, and then you let WordPress do what it's really, really great at, and then you let your forklift do what it's really, really great at. It is possible to have both totally. with proper integration. Yeah, and sometimes we, we even um, recommend that. Key question for in doing anything in business mm -hmm. is how, how would using a CMS affect my bottom line? For sure. Uh, since it gives the, and empowers um, uh, content managers to manage their own own client, the development time doesn't need to be booked for every small update. So when we talked originally about some maybe, what's the advantage of a CMS versus a hard-coded HTML website where people go in and edit those files. Uh, if you want to make a change on that hard-coded site and not have the potential of the like, white screen of death where your website doesn't load, you've got to send an email to a developer, quote it enough time to do your specific update, and they have to complete it for you. So there's going to be a time cost there and a development cost um, just built right into it because this, your, likely your content manager doesn't have that particular skill set. Uh, so where an advantage of a content management system is, is it's built um, for, for like for humans, uh, yeah. not for robots. Yeah. Um, so, um, or developer robots, whatever you want, like people with my particular set of skills. Uh, so it's not built, uh, it's built for um, the Googler uh, to be able to log in and uh, be able to edit the information as if they were a developer and also safely do so and be and have it less likely uh, and very unlikely that they're, if they edit that uh, particular text box or uh, window that they're going to take their, take their site down. Um, which was also another, yeah, uh, I want to talk about bottom line, if you were going to go with a hard-coded solution and then all of a sudden you get that white screen of death and you're frantically Googling web developers, how long is your site down for um, while you're trying to get this one issue fixed? Yeah. Uh, the other side of it too is it's going to prepare your site to be uh, uh, more modular in the future. So you, since you've separated the front end uh, design of the, uh, the website and the um, structured content of the website, um, let's say you're on WordPress right now, but you need a new design, which in WordPress is usually called themes. Uh, you want to develop a new theme uh, and design for your website. Uh, you can do that uh, without having to rebuild everything from the ground from the ground up. You've still got this kind of little structured piece of content that you can get added um, to this new website. So, uh, so affecting the bottom line, um, it means that if you have changes, one, mm -hmm. you're 
more likely, let's, so let's just go with uh, the CMS being WordPress. Okay. Uh, so if you're using WordPress and you need to make small changes, uh, again, like business hours. Yeah. I've already said it a bunch of times. Um, you can make that change to your website instantly. You yeah. Can, you can yeah. put the sign on the door and you can do it, mm -hmm. which means that you don't have to book time to, to find it in the code, is what you're yeah. saying. And then, and then also, when I need to change that storefront that I'm changing the mm -hmm. sign on, uh, because all of a sudden red isn't trending anymore, yeah. uh, that's something that can be done without affecting my content, is what you're saying. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. so it, it basically it affects your bottom line and the time. Mm -hmm. Organizations like WordPress and Drupal and CMSs, it's in their best interest to stay up to date with the website or with, with, the, with the growing web. Um, is there a chance? That uh, a CMS is, is gonna stop being supported, or or like uh, like if, if if that's the backbone of it, and if their updates are what keep it safe, like is that um, is that an issue that I should be concerned about? Uh, in the back of your brain, um, maybe, but there's a, there's a huge asterisk here. So there's really two different types of CMS solutions. Uh, there are ones that are self-hosted, and then there's one hosted with a service. Uh, so the ones that are self-hosted, all the files that power your website are like on a server that you've paid for, you've downloaded, you've put the files there. So uh, let's say it's not going to happen, but WordPress decides um, we're, we're done. We're, we've done it. Yeah. We've done a thing. We're turning off the lights. Uh, they turn off the word lights for WordPress developments in the future. That doesn't mean your website goes down because you put those files and the whole engine is, you own that whole engine. It's on your server and it's, and, it, and it's working. If they shut their doors, you're not going to get any more updates, but your website's still going to be there. Yeah. On a, on a, on your content's still going to be there. Your content, yeah. The, part, like, the yeah. part that you as, yeah. as the, the company or, yeah. or business putting up a website or, or influencer mm -hmm. My 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 sweat is the content, and yeah. that's still there. Yeah, yeah. As well as the functioning yeah. of the website. Yeah. So, but uh, on a solution that is like a subscription ser ser uh, solution that's hosted on theirs, I would hope that any um, uh, self-respecting company that would provide an export of whatever content you've created, but it's really hosted on their servers. If they shut off the lights on their servers, then um, they shut off your lights too. Uh, it's not likely going to happen, but uh, you don't you don't have the actual file that contains that content. Whereas on like a self-hosted WordPress solution, you do have that file. That's like your file. You can download it a million times if you want it today yeah. or tomorrow. Um, on that side, I would hope that any self-respecting company that's a subscription service would give you that data. Yeah, you've created it. Um, but you're hoping on like um, the, the, these companies doing the right thing if they were to shut off their lights. Yeah. Say if you had a WordPress blog uh, that you just posted a daily photo of yourself every day. You know, just maybe this is your outfit of the day or whatever. There's another um, application or social media application called Daily Booth from about, I don't know, five to ten years ago. They did the same thing. Um, they decided to shut their lights. Um, and they did offer an export, but if you missed that window for that export uh, of those particular photos and that content that you created, it could have been years, um, you would that's just gone, it was on their servers. Uh, but if you were doing the exact same thing on a self-hosted solution, um, even if uh, WordPress shut off the lights, you still have all that. It's sitting on a server um, that you've likely paid for. Talking about WordPress, uh, what about the other options like Joomla or Drupal? I, I know we've said WordPress a lot because I, I do know obviously working in Split Mango that that's what we prefer to work with. Mm -hmm. um, but is, is there a reason I should go with WordPress over other options? Um, is it kind of a personal preference or? It is kind of a personal preference, and I guess I can only speak to my experience with those uh, those other particular platforms because I know there um, are shops and users that really, really love Joomla and really love Drupal, uh, and I don't want to like be like, mine is better than yours, but yeah. um, when I've gone into um, the back end of both of these, uh, are these, it seems to me that the way that WordPress has been laid out uh, is easier for um, the lay person to get to what they're looking for and edit the content that they're looking for. So these may these other ones may uh, have a lot of uh, additional functionality, but for me, what a content management system really is is it's giving the power to the content to a content manager that isn't a developer um, that's able to manage their manage and create their own content. And if the con if the complications of the um, if the, of the CMS are so high that you basically have to learn um, this this architecture of this of, of, of this uh, 
CMS to know how to use it, then to me, it's, I have a really hard time recommending it. Like I said, this is just my personal preference and there's people that have very successful sites on both Joomla and Drupal, um, but it, in my experience, uh, I always recommend WordPress uh, because uh, it's always gone over really well to giving, that, giving the keys and power of the website back over to the content creators. I mean, so, so essentially though, what, what, what I hear from, from what you just said is that uh, um, if your content management system requires you, requires the average, the average user or the average mm -hmm. content manager to learn a complicated system, it kind of defeats the point to some mm -hmm. degree. It's, it means that like instead of the system taking care of you, you have to take care of the system mm -hmm. almost. There is a little bit of give and take, even with WordPress. And when you're so close to something um, every day, all day, that it's sometimes it's hard to see um, the flaws in it because you know it so deeply. Uh, well, the way that I like to think about it is like, if you're watching this video and you have a Joomla site or a Drupal site and it really works for you and you know all that back end, but you hear me, an expert here, talking about, oh, I love WordPress and it's really easy to use, but you have a really good grasp on Joomla or Drupal, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you need to jump ship just because I like WordPress better. Better If it's working for you um, and you're not having problems, uh, you don't always need to jump to the, the latest and greatest. But a lot of times uh, when people come to us, uh, they're looking for recommendations and solutions. Uh, and I'm trying to keep their best interests in mind. And uh, in, my, uh, in my opinion, WordPress is that solution. Wrapping up our first vlogcast, we're hoping this conversation was helpful mm -hmm. for CMS. We're hoping we provided a couple answers uh, and maybe steered you in one direction or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, and we also hope that you got to know us a little bit here about at Split Mango, that we'd like to continue to make uh, the web experience a little more human, a little bit more personable. And that's why we're trying to have a conversation about web and web development. Um, and on that note, drop us a line um, on, on any of our social media channels. Uh, you can do it right in the comments below the YouTube video. Um, and, uh, and if you don't want to miss the next episode, make sure you, uh, subscribe to our channel, um, so you don't miss the next one. We do have another one we're planning on getting up, uh, as soon as we can, hopefully within a week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if you do want to join the conversation, feel free to drop us a comment or, uh, find us on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and, uh, that's it. That's our first episode of Search Bar. Yeah. Have fun, uh, creating content. Sweet.